All right, a uh, quick Jason breakdown for you. Everything will hopefully be time stamped in the description, depending on how unlazy I feel. But if you, you know, are interested in hearing about one specific thing, check there. And if you're not interested about hearing one specific thing, then don't watch that bit. So the team had actually formed before the Jazer montage. The majority of the people had already worked together on the Kronovi montage a year prior, and they asked me to join maybe a month before the montage was announced. So we spent a while trying to find work for different people. We were really pushing Phase. We tried to contact Scissors a few different times and we couldn't get through to him. And I think around that time we picked up Jolton as well. We had seen him around the scene and he's a cool guy, so we all wanted to work with him. So for the editing, we split it between Aim Punch and I. I really didn't feel like doing the organizational work, so I delegated that to Aim Punch. So he would go in and record cinematics and kind of find the layout and build the groundwork for the edit. And then what I would do was see that, get inspired, and then go in and re-record the cinematics to be my own style. And then while we were handling the editing, we were also working on the intro. So the intro started with, before we even knew that we were gonna do the Jazer montage, Loomis had an idea where the the planes flying over Champions Field would like transform into cars and then fall on the ground, which I thought could have been cool, but it seemed like it was missing something. And I was like, what if the planes dropped the cars? And then we liked that, so we went in that direction. And then I was trying to think of ways to add character to the montage. And, and so I had an idea to kind of characterize the cars by giving them powers. So we met with each other and kind of filled out a storyboard so we just kind of looked for ways throughout to kind of spice it up here and there. So the intro was made between Jolton and Loomis. Loomis did all the groundwork. He built all the, you know, the animations and kind of built the storyboard out for the scene. And then Jolton came in and made it look pretty. He did all the composition and the rendering and everything like that. And they both put together a little thing showing their process. So I'll let them show what they did. So first of all, you should all follow me. <laughs> first thing I did was just create a simple storyboard to just get some ideas across for what I had in mind. And then after that, went into cinema. Um, so this is just the first scene. It was pretty simple animation. I just added some Eggman inside. Just a nice little Easter egg. No pun intended. And then a vibrate, a few vibrate tags for a bit of camera shake. So first scene here is really simple. It's just the camera in place as the jets fly by. Next up we have a close-up of like the engine of the plane. You can see the Eggman is just vibing. Got scene three, which is just them catching up to the cargo plane. And now for scene four you get to see some of the map. And you can see if you look closely the cargo bay door start to open. There's nothing inside but then next up we're just camera inside the cargo plane and just showing the cargo door opening from the back of the octane after that we just got a simple animation here of the cars inside the cargo plane and it's, i like how you can see everything else in the outside going past the windows it's pretty cool scene five is where it starts getting a little more complicated and time consuming you can start to actually animate the cars going out how I did this animation was just a drift spline for how I wanted them to fall out and then I just animated the um, position and rotation and a, a little trick I used to get a little more realistic animation is um, by doing all the all of the rotation and position and stuff in the in a cloner even though I'm not cloning anything I just it's just to activate MoGraph um, so then I can add a delay effector and set it to spring and then it'll just kind of smooth out all the little animations that I do and make it bounce a little bit. And for scene 6, if you've seen Fast and Furious 6 I think it is, you'll, you'll definitely be able to tell by now that this is inspired by it. It's a cool camera angle here as the, as the skyline falls out and the animation here is actually pretty, like I had to think about it because the way this works is the car is so for the car to be moving with the plane um it has to be a child of the plane and i'm sure there's a be better way to do this to animate the, it not becoming a child anymore but when the car when the car falls out it it moves it'll move with the plane and that's just not realistic at all because once once it falls out the plane's just going to zoom off 
and, and the skyline will just be falling down. So I just had to to try and fake it really. It was just kind of, you, you can see here pretty obviously there, I just have it animating away. So I'm kind of countering that movement so that you can't see, so that it looks as if it's falling away from the plane, even though it's just, it's still moving with it, but you don't notice. And scene seven, we're in Champions Field now. The animation for this one is really quite simple. You can't see the screen here, but it's just very simple motion design. And I'm just showing I'm hitting 750,000 subscribers. The motion design for the logos here was a little more challenging. The, the After Effects file is, the project file is broken, so it won't let me open it. But basically what I did was I got a fractal noise texture and set it to blocky and then just kind of animated it coming up, as you can see here from bottom to top and then just had the NRG logo this is the alpha so it's just black and white but then I had the NRG logo come up it was, it was me trying to replicate um, how it is in the actual game um, Jalton did some extra kind of modeling with this stuff to make it look a little a little better because the end game models aren't that great and then the last um, scene of the intro we just have the blimp at the top here to just continue this from before and have the cars fall down and octane drifts around text comes up and it drives into the camera now again the animation for this one was pretty pretty challenging the way they fall down is actually using the like physics based thing of, of cinema 4d so they're actually kind of realistic impacts and then I just kind of transitioned the physics based animation into just keyframed animation um, and it looks pretty complicated and then the drift here is just creating multiple keyframes of it going round and again as you can see the animation isn't actually that great because it doesn't really go around in a circle it's kind of a square but then gets to here and then it's the same same trick with the other cars and then the text is just simple fall off animation and then I actually use the delay effector again here and use the blend mode instead uh, just to smoothen it out and yeah that is the intro And then finally, once we had all the visuals figured out, we sent it off to Arcane, who did all the sound design on top of the edit. I sent him a message asking if he wanted to explain his process, and he never got back to me, so I guess you guys will never find out how to do sound design ever for a montage. Sorry! So the whole team worked incredibly hard. It was a lot of fun, but it was very stressful. By the end, you know, you're so sick of watching it. I couldn't tell what was good and what was bad. So being able to release it to a big platform and getting this wide response is really cool except for the people that are like it's too over edited i would prefer freestyle friday those are hilarious it's, it's like if i was snowboarding and i was like huh this is really cool but i'd prefer to be in a car it's like what you're here for the snowboard you're not here to ride in an automobile you know what you signed up for when you clicked on the video so first of all, you can see how utterly disgusting the organization for this ends up being at the end of the project. It's so disorganized. There's pre-comps upon pre-comps upon pre-comps. So I do the majority of the work here in this massive sequence. And then I pre-comp that and then do all the CC. So pretty much all it is is I have two shots. I have one of the basic car going towards the ball, and then we use the Bacchus mod plugin where you can 
change the cosmetics of any car throughout the game, which I'm almost positive was built for us throughout this process, which saved our ass asses, our collective asses so, so much. So it allowed me to just click a box and then it would get rid of the car in the middle of the screen. So I could easily just layer that on top of the other one. So I have this whole shot of just no car there. It still interacts with the ball and everything. So the main technique is you have to go in. The hardest part is you have to go in and manually mask the car throughout. Once you have the mask of the car, go in with find edges and then tint to get it black and white and then levels to crush the, the levels. And then from there, what you can do is go to layer auto trace. And what this does is it creates a bunch of masks on each of the contours. So it goes by the luminance. So all the white creates a little mask. And then what you do with that is you take that mask layer. This is all mask. It's all a bunch, a whole bunch of mask. Once you take that, you can apply saber and tell it to follow only the masks on the layer. And it creates this cool outline of the car. So that was pretty much the whole idea for uh, most of these techniques. And then from there, you can kind of tweak it. So I had a deep glow, which was a lifesaver. Aim punch showed me that super cool. And then I, I would like layer different stuff on top and then duplicate it and change the levels and everything. And then I just animated that. And that is how you get this outlined invisible, but still interacts with the scene. Seamless transition T1000 647 seconds telekinetic iceberg machine lettuce car effect just basic stuff but that was the primary technique for that okay next thing i want to talk about is the elemental effects so we tried really hard to build our own we were considering doing it in like different 3d software and importing it in but we really wanted to do it in after effects just because it's a much easier workflow and it looked like none of it was going to be possible until we found this pack that had all these awesome fully 3D elemental effects that you could tweak built entirely inside of After Effects. And we were like, oh, this is great. And then it turns out it's like 90 bucks. Thankfully, we had five or six people that were able to chip in and we bought the pack and that totally saved us. So that's what this fire effect was. I think Aim Punch did pretty much all of this. Like he, he went in and changed the, the ball and stuff. I, I had no participation in this one, so I can't go too in depth. Yeah, I think this one was hand built from a tutorial, but everything else is from that pack. They did have a fire one that worked, but I don't know why we didn't use it. Maybe we did, who knows? I don't. So basically you motion track the scene and then make a light here that lines up with the ball. So you can, you just go in and hand animate a light on top of the ball here that kind of follows the path in 3D space. You can kind of approximate it as long as it looks good enough. It's, it's just a bunch of tweaking and rendering and all kinds of things. There's lots of layers here. Yeah. Okay. So it's particular working off of what looks like some kind of fire and smoke sprite. I'll go through this so you guys get an idea, but it probably doesn't help that much because I, I don't even know what's happening here. We added shake and then there's heat distortion on top of all of that. The video copilot plugin and then a similar pretty basic technique for the lightning. So you can tell our, our attention to detail. So again, I would 3D track the scene, put a null in, figure out the spacing of everything. And then look, I tracked all these, these little particles that follow the car. You can't even tell her there, but they are there and I made them. And then again, I did the technique where I, I have two cinematics of the same shot, one with the car and one without. Uh, and then I do the auto trace thing and then mess with the levels and add saber and all that. And then I have that ramp up to a certain point and then once the car pops, it disappears. And then I added kind of a, like a shake and glow and stuff. And then added another particle system. So they, they pop out around the same size of the car and then layered in that downloaded element we had. So this isn't stock footage. It kind of looks like it, but it's actually a fully 3d particle system built into after effects of lightning. This is the proxy one. So it's not quite fully rendered, but you can see in real time, I have this 3d thing connected to a light and then kind of animated along with the camera and then i add just a shit ton of glows to it 
uh, yeah, so at that point the card disappears, this lightning takes over, and then we transition to the shot that I showed earlier. And then finally we have the green car, which no one really seemed to understand, but it was supposed to be some kind of techno glitchy type deal, where it was like using computer tech. That's why it had these, you can't even see it, but it's like a circuit board on the car, and it was supposed to have these kind of techy particles, which, I mean, worked, but it doesn't really come across if you don't know what it is. So that was a similar technique. We used, I think, Plexus particles which i have no idea what what these even are but way harder to use them in particular but it gives you these cool triangles instead of actual particles these triangles and then that was used for the other scene where it pinches into the ground loomis did actually all of this scene i think some of it's built in cinema 4d and then some of it's built in after effects and then finally we have the wheel transition i originally had this really janky thing where i was gonna have like lightning traveling through different maps and into different portals and stuff and it looked like ass and nobody was on the same page as me with it so we scrapped it and then loomis was like what if we have the the camera go into the wheel and i was like that's a cool idea so i did some testing and i got it to line up pretty well but it was proving really difficult to line up with the video i just couldn't quite get it to work so this car this shot has absolutely nothing to do with the shot before it like that car is not even there. I kind of, I added it here. So maybe it kind of looks right, but it's a totally different, it's a different replay. I just lined up the same map and goal explosion and then put the, put the right car on it. So I, I do this thing where I darken the footage. So I, I crush the blacks of it. So it, it ends up just being black and white. So it ends up being really dark and contrasty. Wow. This looks terrible without shake. Uh, disregard what I'm saying, I guess. I had an, uh, an idea in mind, but it doesn't even matter because the shake totally covers it up. But yeah, essentially, I get it to be as much contrast as possible, and then I set it to add. So there's transparency in the black, and then this is a whole type of thing. So I, I built this a few different ways, and this one was the easiest because I had a certain camera path in mind. But it's a fully 3D scene. Each of these, is, these little line things are a layer that are starting at the same position and then as time goes forward they all fade in and then expand backwards in z space as the camera is traveling forward through it and then i kind of animated it to to ramp up and then because i had this fully 3d scene i could easily just go in and add some particles with particular and i added some star glow and some chromatic aberration and shake in it and then these were kind of uh, made by accident. I was trying to do something completely different and I figured out this weird way to kind of finagle it. I don't think the original exists, but yeah, these were made, these are a separate image sequence that are rendered out from Blender where it's just lines coming through. And then I was able to just add that on top of what we already had and it worked. And then if you just add a shit ton of glow and shake, it totally hides all your mistakes and everyone's like, well, that's a cool transition. Oh, and I got to talk about this scene. This was uh, just pretty much handed off to Jalton with the worst possible setup he could get. And he turned it into this whole damn awesome thing. I bet you guys didn't even notice these weird black lines or the fact that this just is a still image tracked onto the scene because he's a wizard and you never notice these things. The ball teleports halfway through it. It was a bunch of stuff lined up. It was terrible. Then of course the end credits were done by Loomis. So yeah, that that I think that about covers everything that needs to be talked about. If you guys have any questions, join my Discord and I might be able to answer them. Who knows? And uh, to the people who were commenting, wow, if this is the 750k, imagine the one mil montage. That doesn't make any sense. It's not like we intentionally didn't make it as good as we can because we're waiting for the 1 million milestone on Jazer's channel that doesn't make any sense i don't uh, do you think that just like somehow people get a hundred times better because he gets 250,000 more subs what does the amount of subs have anything to do with the skill of the people signing <laughs>